I may have been wrong about mixing cardio and resistance training. Like a number of years ago, you never ever would have caught me combining the two. I was always very, very set in my ways about having a clear line of delineation between my resistance training and my cardio. As a matter of fact, I grew up a runner. I always viewed cardio as cardio. And when cardio was potentially blended with resistance training, I almost took it personally because I felt like, wow, this doesn't seem right. And there was a lot of data back then to suggest that combining cardio and resistance training could be detrimental. I've even done videos talking about kind of the minute differences. I mean, not, not anything crazy, but the minute effect of doing cardio prior to resistance training and how it could negatively impact your strength. Well, now there's newer research to suggest this might not be the case. And it's kind of interesting because it comes at an intriguing time for me when I've been doing much more, I don't like the word functional training, but I've been doing much more CrossFit style work. And it came out of necessity a couple of years ago. My kids were growing up and I was doing more of this style of training and just be able to get cardio and resistance training sort of in one. And I noticed like my body composition was changing for the better. And I was just thinking, you know, maybe I've got enough muscle mass on me that I'm just surviving and maintaining muscle. But then I realized I was getting stronger too. Anyhow, let's look at this data. So there was a 2022 study published in the journal Sports Medicine that analyzed 43 different studies to look at what is called the interference effect. I'll give you an example. People that are like opposed to CrossFit, and this is not something to try to like encourage CrossFit per se, but people that are opposed to CrossFit will say, that's one of the worst things you can do metabolically because you put yourself in this gray area where because you're doing so much cardio, you're not able to get more out of your resistance training and vice versa. You're doing so much resistance training, you're not able to get a lot out of your cardio. You're fatiguing yourself before you go into submaximal lifts. A lot of that makes sense. Like if you're trying to go for building the most monstrous physique ever and bodybuilding, then yes, I do think that having like clear, direct approach to resistance training is probably best. But if you're a casual goer and you're trying to consolidate time like in an hour, I don't think there's anything wrong now with combining some cardio and resistance training, like doing some assault bike or some rower and then jumping over and doing some deadlifts, as long as you're not going for like total maximal lifts. Anyhow, look at this data. They essentially found that concurrent training, doing cardio and resistance training, did not have any negative effect on strength, but particularly did not have any negative effect on hypertrophy. So when they actually analyzed all the data, they said, wait a minute, this whole interference thing is a myth, or at least kind of a myth, right? Like if you were to exhaust yourself and do a bunch of rower and then go and do like, try to max out on a bench press, you probably won't be as strong, but who knows, you might also be loose enough from the cardio that you bench better. But let's look at some mechanisms and see what's going on here, because now we have some new research that might explain things. There was a study published in Exercise and Sports Science Reviews that basically demonstrated that cardiovascular work alters protein metabolism. Cardio alters protein metabolism. This is interesting. I've always, always suggested that no matter what, if you do cardio, you treat your cardio like resistance training as far as your protein is concerned. I don't think people realize that when they go out for a run, the amount of eccentric contraction, say on the quadricep when you're running, is huge. You just did thousands and thousands and thousands of reps with your body weight, even through partial range. But what's interesting is we've seen in other literature that you can kind of work a muscle through a short range and still get a fair bit of hypertrophy. So if you're running and you're maybe only getting a few degrees of flexion and extension in your, in your legs, you're still putting serious load on those legs. So I've always suggested after any kind of cardio or aerobic training, eat more protein. Treat it like it's resistance training. I also put a link down below if you're trying to increase your protein for butcher box that is a grass-fed, grass-finished beef that is like undeniably my favorite beef that's on the market. Their bison is unreal. Their ground beef is probably my personal favorite. 
Like I'm just not a huge steak guy. I love my ribeyes, I love my New Yorks, and trust me, they're amazing through ButcherBox, but their ground beef is just amazing. And right now they still have the promo going on that you get free ground beef for a year when you sign up with ButcherBox. So you get free ground beef, packaged on with your order for a year. So anyway, everything gets delivered to your doorstep. They've got grass-fed, grass-finished steak, they've got beef, they've got chicken, they've got scallops, they've got salmon, they've got cod, they've got hot dogs, all things that are going to be in that grass-fed, grass-finished fashion that you want, especially when it comes down to the red meat because that's where it matters. So that link is down below. Check them out, get some good quality protein if you're doing cardio, if you're doing resistance training and you wanna get that extra protein in. So that link is down below. Highly, highly, highly recommend it, even if it's not for anything else other than you're looking for a better tasting beef. It's right there. So in this study, they found that aerobic exercise acutely and chronically altered protein metabolism to increase hypertrophy. What does this simply mean? Well, they broke it down more. In fact, if you look at the image that's on the screen right now, you can see it. Essentially what's happening is these multiple repetitions, these multiple contractions and relaxations of the muscle during aerobic exercise is altering protein metabolism by increasing muscle protein synthesis and actually decreasing muscle protein breakdown. The long and the short of it is you're activating different pathways that are not activated through traditional resistance training. Resistance training is a very metabolic thing too. Like you break muscle down and then you repair it. And building muscle is always a balance of muscle protein synthesis, how much protein can you synthesize into muscle compared to how much are you breaking down? So if you're breaking down a lot, but synthesizing a whole lot, that's really good. If you're breaking down a little and synthesizing a whole lot, that's even better, right? It's like this, if this hand is going to be breakdown and this hand is synthesis, synthesis goes up, that's great. But if breakdown goes down, that delta, that gap in between my hands is how much muscle you're essentially building. So increase in muscle protein synthesis with no decrease in breakdown, then that's that much. But if you also decrease breakdown, then you have this huge chunk here. So now we're finding that doing cardio, not necessarily with your resistance training, but just in general, improves this. So it might make sense. So what is the takeaway from all of this? If you only have 45 minutes or 60 minutes, by all means, do some burpees in between your sets. By all means, go run on the treadmill before you do some pull-ups. If that is how you get your cardiovascular work in, because that's the only way that you have time for it, you're gonna get well-rounded fitness that does not seem to, quote unquote, interfere with your hypertrophy. As a matter of fact, you might just feel fitter. And there's some other interesting data, by the way, that backs up if you increase your VO2 max, you're going to have better weight loss. That was published in the journal Investigative Medicine. It was pretty strong data too. When they put people on 10 weeks of moderate cardiovascular work, they found that all groups lost weight, but there was more weight loss the higher the VO2 max. So if you actually push yourself cardiovascularly and you actually make your workouts hard by doing the hard cardio, the burpees, the battle ropes, the assault bike, then you might actually increase that VO2 max more and increase your fat loss more while potentially activating these pathways that allow you to build more muscle too. It's a win-win for time and for effectiveness. I'll see you tomorrow.